and welcome to John Drinks, the channel in which I, John, have a drink. And today we're going to be carrying on our look at the White Mackay range, both old and new, by having a look at this. This is Old Feta Cairn, and this particular bottle is from the 1980s. The general idea of this is to kind of give us sort of an idea of what Feta Cairn used to be like. I have tried some Feta Cairn fairly recently to kind of get myself ready for this review, and it was all right. It was okay. It was nothing special, if I'm being completely honest. There was sort of a, a nice savoury note to it, but it was a bit washy and kind of... It was sort of like a watercolour in whiskey form. It was kind of hard to describe. Um, this is Old Feta Cairn. Feta Cairn used to always be bottled as Old Feta Cairn. It's not sort of an indication of the overall age of the whiskey itself. The actual whiskey itself is... Um, is indeed a no-age statement, so beyond it being three years old, we don't know how much older it could be, if it is even any older than that. So I'm intrigued to see what's actually in the bottle. Um, it's 40% chill filtered, coloured, all the usual things that we're getting to expect from White Mackay so far. Um, if you haven't watched any of the previous instalments in this sort of mini-series, um, there'll be a card up here where you can watch some of the videos already, but so far we've covered two different eras of Jura 10, and we've also looked at the Dalmore 12, and we'll be finishing off with a look at an older White Mackay blend next episode. There's some links down below as well if you don't want to follow the cards, and there'll also be a link down to my Patreon if you feel like financially supporting the channel. You can do. There are perks that come with the channel, and they're at different tiers. Feel free to check them out if you are intrigued. That's the plugging done. Let's get on with the whiskey. Now, as previously mentioned, there's no real point in looking at the colour of the whiskey because it is artificial, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing special there in any respect at all. It's completely coloured. But on the nose... Ooh, there's something quite rubbery about it. Um, getting a bit of like a sultana note. Something quite bitter, a little bit acrid. There's some um, quite fusile notes to it as well. There's something of pencil shavings in there as well. It's a little bit vegetal. I kind of like um, green beans, boiled potatoes. And there is that fusile rubbery note. It's, it's It sort of dominates the nose. Okay, well that's that's fascinating, but I'm I'm curious to see what it actually tastes like as well. So we'll do that because that's how you taste whiskey. You put it in your mouth. It's fair to say whatever I was expecting, I was not expecting that. It's like a massive explosion of plum. Uh, and then it's a, a little bit bitter. And I couldn't tell you more about the bitterness itself, it just is bitter. And then there's not really much in the way of a finish. A little bit woody, and then it's just kind of gone. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's just a, a slightly, um... Quite an unwelcome bitterness, in some ways. And then the finish, it just kind of disappears. There's not really anything of note. Um, so I'm going to open it up with a bit of water to kind of see if more comes out of this. I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a generous amount of water because I get the feel it's holding back. There's again a very rubbery, plasticky kind of a nose. It's close to sort of bin bags now. It's not. It's still not good. A little bit of like an over stewed tea kind of a note in there. Yeah, something a little bit akin to damp walls. Hmm, maybe a little bit red currenty. But yeah, more off notes than anything else. Much more of a caramel arrival with this now. A little bit like a barbecue smoke kind of a, kind of a flavour. Tiny bit tobacco-y, and then it's kind of dumb. I wouldn't say there's anything really to write home about, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest. Of all of the White Mackay whiskies that we've tried in this sort of mini-series so far, I'd say that this one is by far the least inviting and the least complex. Um, that includes the modern bottlings as well. Um, they've each had sort of their own signature to provide, whereas this one, it's a bit more of a fight. And what it does provide... It's not something that you'd go out of your way to drink. Um... 
it, it, it's fine. You know, it's a whiskey that, you know, if somebody gave it to you, you'd drink it. But beyond that, I don't really have much nice to say about it. That's the thing. Unremarkable. Quite forgettable. It's kind of a hairspray thing going on, actually, now. Yeah. Yeah, not, not brilliant work. If this was offered up to me, it's a shame, actually. This is probably the one that I was looking forward to the most. Because I've heard good things. And it's let me down. It really has. It's, it's a massive disappointment, this one. Um, I'd pass it over in future, and that's a shame. I mean, old Fetakay and bottlings are seldom seen. Um, but, you know, if on the off chance you're in a place that has vintage whiskey, or you're at an auction or something, there's nothing remarkable. I wouldn't bother. That's a shame, but hey-ho. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, and do join me next time, where I'll be drinking something else. <laughs>